Hey folks, Hope here, and welcome to my brand new storage room. Yep, we got all of our dyes over there. We got our candles over there. We got all of our concretes and concrete powders down here and all of our glass over here. And I am so happy with how this has turned out. This was such a fun challenge for an interior. So if you haven't caught the video, wh what are you doing here already? You gotta go watch the main channel video before this one. Well, let's jump on into our comment of the day. Well, many comments of the day. Starting off here with Nocturnal Snowy. Hey Flip, I'm in the process of starting a YouTube channel, but I've been having some trouble with the keyboard sound in the background. I'm assuming they mean key clicking sound from a keyboard. I was wondering what keyboard do you use and how do you get rid of the sound? So I love mechanical keyboards. There are certain types of switches that you can get that make things a little bit better. I use a Keychron keyboard. It's a fairly good brand that you can do a lot of self modifications to that I really like about it. And the most important part is what switches you're actually using. I use the Cherry MX silent switches, which makes the clicking a lot less noisy. Uh, that only comes from mechanical keyboards. There's a few other ones that are different levels of sounds and clickiness and overall just feel of using the keyboard. And as somebody who sits at this computer for far too many hours per day than I care to admit, I found that this was my favorite one. And I've tried like five or six different key types and things like that. And this is what I've settled on. On top of that, though, you can go aftermarket and go search on Amazon or just go to your local computer, hardware, whatever storage shop that you can find. And you can buy these things called O-rings. They are quite literally tiny little plastic rings that you can take out the keys on your keyboard. Use the proper tool for it. Don't break your keyboard. Look up a video if you don't know what you're doing. Don't don't break your keyboard. Don't don't do. Hey, Flip told me to do this. And then you broke your keyboard. Don't do it. Don't don't be dumb. But there's different sizes of O-rings that can help further reduce the amount of echo happening within your keyboard. So I found that I did the lesser version of the O-rings, the smaller ones, and that wasn't enough. So I ended up just buying a second pack of them and put two of each of the little rings on each of the keyboards or each of the keys. Yes, across the entire keyboard. You have to take every single key out and do it there. It's really annoying and it takes a few hours, but nobody hears keyboard clicking in my videos anymore off this new keyboard. So it's it's great. And then also on top of that, if you're using things like OBS for recording, looking to see if there's noise reduction stuff, you can set up noise gates, you can uh, through your microphone and everything like that. There's a lot of noise sensitivity that you can pick up and maybe see where your microphone is sitting and a lot of that stuff. And there's just a lot of things you can do for your recording space to help get a lot of better, better audio quality, like reducing the amount of echo in your room or something like that. That can be as simple as putting some pillows around your keyboard or around your microphone or around your desk. Or I know a really simple, cheap fix that I heard about a long time ago that I know, I know a few people have used is taking empty egg cartons and just taping those up on your wall because it reduces the flat surface and the cardboard or whatever that is for the egg cartons really helps reduce noise. Then when you get a little bit more official into it and start actually building a full recording studio, that's when you can look into like acoustic sound paneling and all of that is going to be able to help give you a lot better audio for your videos. That's something that I feel like a lot, a lot of people cover and you just kind of hear, oh yeah, just get better audio. It'll be fine. So hopefully that helps give you a few tips and turns you in the right direction. I would say very big thing. If you have a mechanical keyboard, start checking out those O-rings. I think I bought a pack for like $12. And then I had to buy the second pack for another $12. So I, I would say just buy the bigger one for like 16 bucks for the thicker ones and just do that or just experiment with what you want. I don't know. Unfortunately, there's not a perfect answer because it's all your own different environments and everything like that. But hopefully that does help. Our next question today is coming in from user FC to blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of letters on it. I'm assuming their username just got deleted. So I just didn't type it all out. In reference to the rant every stream, when someone asks you how to build better, every single time you give them the same advice as the comment build more, but sugarcoat it as practice. This kind of ties into another question that I didn't realize till after that I chose from Jewel here for our last question of the day. So I'm going to read this one out and we're going to kind of respond to both of them at the same time. In general, I agree. I think you pointed out a lot of good ways to help people. This is all in response to the final comment I responded to in the last video talking about how to give advice and how to help people learn how to be a better Minecraft builder, or just helping people learn and figure out their own learning ways. And so I picked both of these out here. Uh, Jules says, I would just like to add that maybe some responsibility should also be on the one asking the question. Short, vague questions elicit short, vague answers. That's really important going back to user's question. If someone asks, 
how can I build better without context? You can type four pages full with building tips or just answer, I don't know, just build more. I'm just saying that if you are more specific with your questions, people will see that you are putting in more effort and will find it a lot easier to give a helpful answer. The best way to answer is probably to ask a few more clarifying questions, but it's nice, but it's really nice if the context is already in the first question. The more info you give, the better help you'll get. Now, to be clear, even if you ask a short, vague question that doesn't warrant any toxicity from anybody who answers, I completely agree with Flip here. So we got kind of those two in there together. In response to the first one, you're right. I definitely do on live streams just go, yeah, probably just practice and build some more and things like that. Because if you think about it, if you've been in the live streams, as it sounds like they have on this, you'll see that a lot of the live streams have with we are typically sitting at like 1200 people inside of a live stream and i would say we probably get 50 to 100 people every single stream coming in and saying hey flip how do i build better hey can you give me building tips like bro i don't know what you're building i how am i going to give you a building tip of i don't know maybe try spruce trap doors have you heard about that like i when there's no context in there like jewel had mentioned how can I really give advice to what they're saying other than a general answer? And also on top of that, if I were to pause every single time on a stream, so the answers here are basically, do I ignore the question and just read over it and not response and carry on with what I'm doing? Or do I try and slightly point them in the right direction with saying, maybe learn how to practice more, or even sometimes I'm like, maybe spend a week learning how to build roofs. I feel like that's a pretty common response I say because a lot of people ask me how to build a roof for their Minecraft builds. So there's only so many ways that I can really go about it without completely derailing the entire stream off of what one person out of 1200 people have asked a question for, where I have a responsibility as a streamer to be there providing entertainment for everybody. You'll see a lot of top streamers if you go into somebody's chat like Shroud, as an example, one of the largest streamers over on Twitch. If you go into his chat, he actively You'll hear him say it every once in a while. He actively says that he does not give shout outs to people. Even if people become a four year long subscriber or donate like $100 to him, he will not read shout outs because he thinks that it interrupts the stream so much for the other 30 to 40,000 people that are there just wanting to watch the content of him playing the game, him talking about what he's doing in the game and all of those things. Granted, he's not doing anything wrong by not reading him out and he's still interacting with his chat. He's still chatting and responding to people all the time, but you don't see him with any long responses, thanking people for anything that they're doing other than like, hey, how's it going? Occasionally to people in chat when he's like responding to their question or something like that, when he has a little downtime in between matches. But you can kind of see where I'm going with this one of, there's a lot of things that are just pushed on streamers nowadays of being the place to go ask questions because a lot of smaller streamers really build their communities based off of that. When you have five or 10 people in your chat room, it's really easy to dive in and give a lot of time and energy to each every single individual person in there because you're really trying to foster those relationships. I'm not saying that as you get a bigger streamer, just hey, 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 screw the viewers, blah, 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 they're just here to watch. No, but that's, you have to also acknowledge the uh, elephant of 1200 people sitting in a room, 1200 elephants sitting in a room of, I don't have the ability to break down every single time somebody asks, hey, Flip, how do I build better in a live stream? I don't have the ability to spend 20 minutes of my two, two and a half hour live stream talking to them and telling them how to build better. And going off of what Jules saying, if you need to ask the clarifying questions, uh, if somebody just says, hey, Flip, how do I build better? Like, I have no context to that. I don't know. Focus on the shape of your builds. I don't, I know nothing about the people asking those questions except for what they've told me inside of the chat so there's no actual way i can give advice because i have no idea what their minecraft builds look like they could already be up there as a pearlescent moon of the minecraft building worlds and they're 10 times better than me building these insane organics and everything like that and for some reason they'd be asking me how to build better i mean i i don't know i, don't, I wouldn't be able to help in any context like that so all i can really assume is people asking those questions are coming in at the beginning levels and they don't really have a whole lot of the skills on how to build better so at that point, it's really maybe you should start exploring a little bit of how you want to learn. And I probably could word it better. I, I'm not perfect. I'm responding on a whim as I'm going of something that I read out in the chat. And usually I just kind of respond and go on to the next message or I go back to talking about what I was doing as I was focusing it. 
Oh my gosh, my beacons are still up over there. Uh, let's go tear those down. But yeah, the reason why I wanted to respond to this first question here was very much on the side of as a live streamer, it's very, very difficult to break that down and respond to everything. So as much as I hate doing a don't do what I do, do what I say type thing here. Um, also, maybe that means that I should be listening to my own advice of the last time. If you, if you don't have the time or energy or effort to be able to respond, maybe you just don't respond. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Maybe I should just not be responding to those all the time and focusing on other questions that do ask for more detail, like what Jewel had mentioned, because that would allow for a better, healthier discussion. If somebody's like, hey, Flip, I'm really struggling on roofs. How can I help build better? They always just seem to turn out the same. And then we can start do, talking about like how to change up the slope of your roof or how to change up the materials you're using. Maybe you need a framing on the outside before you're diving into it too much. Like that's where I can give actual concrete advice on how to make something a little bit better. But when you're in the realm of, hey, Flip, how do I build better? And all I know is your name is user dash blah, 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 blah. Because maybe YouTube doesn't allow you to have an account name for some reason like that. Like there's nothing that I can really do to help to actually give true advice other than something basic of those beginning steps. And I feel like I'm also doing it in a way that is not really dismissing the person. Like I'm, I'm down if they ask another question, I'll respond to it. That's more in depth, but it's also a, it's a hard one to dive into really. Jumping into what Joel said about how there's a little bit of responsibility on people asking questions. I think that's a really important thing that you don't know what you want until you can really like know what you want, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you don't know until you know, you know, uh, but I think that's a very important thing to acknowledge, especially when people are asking questions on the internet of there are a lot of people who just don't really know what question to ask. And that is a very hard thing that I struggle with personally of sometimes when I don't understand things, I don't even know what I should be asking to start getting to the question that I actually want to understand. Like I need to back it up so many steps to be able to get to the one that I actually want the answer to. And then there's so many other questions along the route to get there. But being able to learn and figure out how to ask those questions and get to a point where you can get to the that end question that you really want to be asking that's a skill in itself that a lot of people need to work on. And it's something that is hard to teach somebody how to do that. It's hard to teach somebody how to actually find and ask questions that you want to know the answers to. Outside of really the second part Joel had mentioned about asking clarifying questions that can kind of help guide the people, but then also puts a lot of the research phase on the person who's there to be helping. So it's if you have the time again, if I think all this comes down to if you actually have the time to help somebody and you have the desire to do it, there's a difference between having the time and the desire or the ability to do it and the desire to do it are two very different things. So I would say if you're on both of those, then very much sit down and do it and spend the time to do it. Whereas for me, when I'll be honest, I'm in a bit of a weirder position being a content creator that is known for building in Minecraft. A lot of people constantly ask me questions. I think I get the question of how to how do I build better? Or, hey, Flip, can you give me building tips? Or even more specific ones recently, I've had one person commenting on every single main channel video that I've released for the past three months asking me to do a tutorial on some ca castle in Scotland. I don't know why I would ever do a tutorial on a specific castle somewhere in Scotland that I also have still yet to Google a picture of. Maybe it looks really cool and I will want to do it one day or like build something themed off of it. But I'm like, why? Why are you asking me? I don't one. I, my channel is not build tutorials. And two, it's kind of weird to ask me to make an entire video just for this one person like I get from the outside perspective you can be like that yeah that's cool like there's definitely some of you that have inspired me to do certain build topics or ideas as I'm going but it's also a very real thing of I have to prioritize what I think is the right result for a video that's going to do well and making a tutorial on a random castle from Scotland that I it's just not going to get views <laughs> maybe if I were to build the thing and do a hardcore video off of hey I built a really cool castle like that could work and maybe it looks like that castle but if i were to break it down and do a block by block tutorial the one that would probably be like 30 40 hours of me figuring out one how to build the castle and then two how to record building the castle again a second time and breaking it down into a way that's understandable as a tutorial like that is a lot of energy and effort to be able to respond to that one question so there's that side that Jules said about like people need to ask smarter questions and things like that 
But then also people asking the questions need to think about the other side. I mean, you can always just get a no, and that's the worst thing that'll happen in that case. But sorry, random commenter asking for the castle. I, I think it's I think it's going to be a no. Sorry, my friend. But yeah, in turn, uh, uh, try to just not be the stereotypical toxic Minecraft player, help people out or being willing to say, yeah, just I don't have time or I, I don't know how to help you right now. Or even telling the person who's asking you the question, it's an OK thing for you to say, hey, I would love to help you, but I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try and figure out more about what you're looking for help on? And then we can look about how to help you like this little guy. He's probably stuck right there. How can I help you, sir? Because I can't remove that fence. So are we just going to wait for you to grow? Yeah, that sounds good. Jumping backwards to question three now, this one is coming in from Aiden. Even without watching the video, I feel like the answer is a solid maybe. My video title last time was, is the Minecraft community toxic? Because it's not the entire community that's toxic, but a loud minority is. And it results in new features like the bogged and wind charges being downplayed by toxic members who aren't appreciative of anything. Oh, this is a spicy one. So spicy, I figured we had to walk all the way out here to New Papyrus for a new place to wander around in. But I kind of threw that title out to definitely be a little clickbaity. I, I will 100% admit that sometimes you got to clickbait and that's just part of the YouTuber life. But I feel like on all the clickbait that I do, I follow through. So then is it really clickbait? I don't know. That's a side topic. That's a topic for another day. Because if it's not lying, is it clickbaiting or is it just a good title? Very different things because clickbait to me is something that's lying and you aren't getting what you're actually promised when you actually click and watch the video. Interesting stuff to think about, you know? But anyways, with the Minecraft community being toxic, I very much agree that it is a minority of the community that's toxic and a very loud, loud, loud minority at that. I mean, heck, we get a lot of people coming in every single day into the live streams and in my comment sections just saying not the nicest of things. And by that, you can kind of show that there is toxicity within the community. But then at the same time, I would say that the core community that we have here, especially a lot of the people that are very, very core and chatting all the time in the Discord, they are some of the loveliest and most welcoming people that I have ever seen inside of a community. And they're very much there to uplift everybody else around them that wants to be a part of this community. And that is really, really cool to be able to see. But we definitely have some guards up in place for rules that I've said in the Discord or just the community has created their own social standards in there as well of once you're in the circle, you're in the circle for sure until you mess that up. But it is definitely a little, it's a little bit of a trial period before you get added to the circle and kind of welcome into that, which is a part of any community. And I think that's really true in the Minecraft community because of how much toxicity has been going around especially when you look at a lot of youtubers whose entire revenue stream off of making videos is off making videos about how terrible the new snapshots are because that gets so many clicks but at the same time that is one of the least healthiest things for the minecraft community i'm not saying we have to praise everything that mojang's doing because there's some things that they're doing that i don't 100 percent agree with or i think they could do better in a different way and I will talk about those 100%. But you'll never see me upload a video saying Minecraft 1.21 ruined Minecraft or that Mojang is lazy and that they've ruined the game. Like, I don't think that's true. I think they're doing a good job. I think there's more that I hope that they will do. And I hope that as they've been expanding their team and touting so much that they've been growing the team and adding all these new people and making things more efficient so they can more effectively add things in the future. I think that's a lot of behind the scenes information that you don't see glorized or even really put into those videos talking about how Mojang is quote ruining the game or now the all, all the people that love to say that after Microsoft bought it how much that Microsoft has killed Minecraft why would Microsoft invest a billion dollars in something to then kill it I mean that's just logically that doesn't make sense unless they want a really big tax write-off you never know but <laughs> aside on that one, we don't need to dive into that part of it too much. But anyways, the Minecraft community being toxic, especially towards the new updates, I think is a very, very true thing. If you look at a lot of the people who I think are currently screaming into the darkness or screaming into the interwebs about how terrible our new updates are, I think it's a lot of people who I heard this comment a while ago and I actually agree with it. It's a lot of people who started playing Minecraft in the village and pillage era or the nether update era when we had two updates back to back that were just chock full of features. There were so many features in there and they were fantastic. And I think it's people who started playing 
either when all that stuff was live or shortly after it was live that might not remember the things like the update aquatic coming out for 1.13.0 in the cod apocalypse where you cannot run a minecraft server because of how laggy minecraft cod were when they first got added the amount that they spawned in the oceans and didn't despawn meant that we in order to run servers which i can't remember i don't think that was empire season one at the time i think that was back in the legacy smp days we had to make a data pack to literally kill every single cod when they spawned into the game otherwise our server would lag so much because those each individual entities were causing more lag than like 20 villagers or something like that and they were spawning endlessly and not despawning so our server before we realized that when we update we're like oh my gosh the new aquatic update is going to be so fun this is going to be so so cool we're all so excited for it we literally could not play on the server so i think a lot of the people who are now complaining that mojang isn't doing much and all that i think mojang is really just looking at what they did before and we're like "Ooh, we can't let those bugs slide through so until we can really narrow down a strategy to more healthily update the game in a safer way that's not going to cause all those big chaotic and messy things to come through I think they are downplaying the updates and I think they are moving them down and doing smaller things. But then in return, they're not sharing that information with the community. So a very toxic portion of the community is really taken on top of that and just said, really, this is all we're getting in the new update. This is terrible. This is blah, 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 blah. What do you mean a wind charge and a breeze or whatever the heck they're called? I don't I don't even know what they're called, to be honest. I haven't looked at it much. I'm excited for the new trial chambers. Think about all the copper I'm going to be able to get out of them and all the tough bricks. It's going to be so good. There's a villager here. Oh, it's a nitwit. That makes sense. That that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, so there's a lot of people who are constantly just screaming about how bad the game is right now. And then I think are taking in turns that of also wanting to make other people's experience worse because they want other people to feel sad alongside them because they don't know how to properly process what they're going through. So I think that's a lot of reason why toxicity spreads so much is they're like, well, instead of me feeling down, I can make somebody else feel down and then that'll make me feel happier for a few seconds. And then they keep at it. But when we look at the things coming through, like the bogged and the wind charges, like I'll be honest, at first glance, I, I'm a little bummed that the bog is just a retextured variant of the stray that also has poison arrows. And if that's like one of our last big features coming in, I'm a little disappointed that that's kind of all we're getting. Feels like there could be a lot more coming through for this game that would really add more, especially when we're seeing just like retextured and re-envisioned things. Like you don't see me shouting about how much I don't like it or anything like that, but I will say I wish there's a little bit more that they added and a little bit more that hopefully is still coming for the update. I would say if 1.21 releases as is right now, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the update. I'll be honest, I, I will happily not happily. I don't want to be happily saying I'm disappointed in a Minecraft update, but I will honestly say that I think there could have been more stuff coming in 121 because it just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot for my play style outside of the new copper grates, copper trap doors and tough bricks. There's not much else I'll really do outside of maybe checking out a trial chamber once or twice. And that's it. That's 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 pretty much it. That's all I really am going to do in 121. But you'll see people out there just screaming and saying that like with that, Minecraft has ruined the game because look how lazy they're being and blah, 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 blah. And that's okay if not every update in a sandbox game is geared directly towards your playstyle. That's kind of part of a sandbox game is they have to make it available for everybody who wants to play the game and not everybody plays this game the same way. So I, I think that's fine. I'm missing slabs here. Nope, it's the three, four wide one. It's intentional. We're calling it now. I'm not fixing it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of great people inside the Minecraft community. I mean, I met some of my best friends ever while playing Minecraft and everything like that that I met through the internet. So I definitely am very, very much a believer in the statement of there's a lot of good that's inside this community as there's so many lovely people that I've gotten to meet throughout of all of it. So all I would say on that, we've been rambling for quite a while, is... uh. Try to give Mojang the benefit of the doubt and maybe every, not everything that is super geared towards you, but there could be something that like other people are excited for that are really looking forward to this update. Or hopefully this just means that Mojang, as they're moving forwards and kind of expanding into new things and developing the update and doing a lot of that behind the scenes stuff, hopefully that means that bigger updates are on the way and they're doing it in a way that makes it more efficient so we don't get a scenario like the Caves and Cliffs where it gets split ac across three updates because nobody really likes that either. Like when they promise a bunch of stuff and then they're like, ooh, actually we over promised. 
but somehow this ramble has went on longer than the last ramble so uh i'm gonna be calling it there <laughs> thank you all so very much for watching leave a like if you did enjoy subscribe if you're brand new leave some comments down below and uh we'll get some more questions rocking for the next episode as we're working towards episode 60 59 is next then 60 and a uh, new world download coming out for all of the members over on the main channel woohoo but with that my friends i'll catch you all on the flip side